Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Legend of Korra Book 4 Balance episode review. This one's going to be for K408 Remembrances. And uh, yeah, first thing to say is, um, sorry if you can hear the rain in the background. It's lashing, it's really lashing rain right here. And uh, my room is in the attic, so the rain is quite loud. But um, yeah, let's get into the episode. Um, I'll start by saying, just quite simply, you know, worst episode of Avatar or Korra ever. But that's for a reason, and in a way, Mike and Brian purposefully sacrificed this episode to make the rest of the book better overall. Um, if you haven't heard, uh, this is obviously the, uh, basically a clip show episode. There's probably <clears throat> four or five minutes of new animation, maybe a little bit more if you include the little chibi pop-ups uh, throughout the clips. Um, and the rest of it's just flashbacks to um, <clears throat> book one, two, and three. And, you know... They basically said that the reason for this is because their book four budget was basically slashed by one episode. So they went from having enough budget for 13 full episodes, which is the run of this book, to only having enough for 12 episodes. And so they basically said that instead of basically getting, basically telling all the crew to basically leave a few weeks early so they could do... Um, a full episode for this one, they decided to keep the, to keep the crew there and just force themselves to have to do a clip show episode here just to make up the number of episodes. So that, that, that's basically how things went, that um, Mike and Brian didn't want to do that to their crew so they just kind of kept them on board and basically just had to do this kind of more limited episode. Um, so yeah, there's a good reason for why this episode is as it is. Um, but uh, even so, it's still I think it's still fair to say that it's disappointing that this amazing start to book four has come to an end at this point. <clears throat> I don't think anyone expected this because it really did come out of nowhere that like this is like just a full on clip show episode. Um, <clears throat> most people I think, <clears throat> uh, sorry, uh, most people I think expected um, it to be a more slower paced episode. Just a lot of kind of talking, discussing the past. But I don't think anyone just expected full-on anime levels of clip show, where most of the episode is just episodes we've seen before, characters talking about it briefly, and maybe learning something from their past experiences, talking about them. <clears throat> um, but, you know, that's the episode that we got. And even so, even despite that, it, it's not the worst uh, kind of a recap episode I've ever seen. But if, if for Korra, it's made worse by two facts. One, overall, there's such a few amount of episodes. This is, this was, you know, once we found out the length of all of the seasons, a tight 52 episode series, super plot focused, character focused. And so this episode really is just comes out and really highlights itself as being like the worst of them all because it's the one episode that doesn't really do much. Um, two, the previous recap episode we had in Avatar The Last Airbender was amazing and really showed what you could do with a recap episode, Ember Island Players. That you can have all new animation, but still touch on those events that have come before, but also have the visuals come out in an interesting way that really allows the characters to move from that. And so, an episode like this tries to kind of do that, have the characters have emotional reactions based on what's come before, but it can't really do that because, uh, you know, just the visuals are kind of a bit all over the place, um, just being episodes that have come before. As for what actually happened, it's split into three parts. We get Mako talking to Wu, and the Tu and Yin are also there. We get um, um, Korra talking to Asami, and then Tenzin comes in at the end. And then we get Varric talking about Bolin's past. Uh, with uh, Baraz and Anna there, and the other um, kind of refugee uh, escapees from their re-education camps. And they just happen literally one after the other. There's no, like, cutting between each one. It's just Mako, Korra, Bolin. And with Bolin, uh, with, with Mako, who's obviously first, um, it starts off pretty interesting. You know, uh, okay, he's going to teach Wu how to fight, uh, become a bit uh, more tough. Knocks him down once, Wu reveals, like, wait, I don't know much about you, tell me about yourself. Mako tells him a little bit, he brings up the fact that he dated Korra, Wu wants to hear about this, and he recaps all of book one, two, and three, basically. His whole, just, reaction throughout the whole thing. Um, 
it doesn't really give you much extra information that you couldn't have interpreted yourself just from watching the episodes. Like, there's no big reveals about, wait, Mako was thinking this way at this point in time? You don't really get that. The only thing you really get throughout this whole thing is the other characters kind of giving their commentary on it as fans as it kind of plays out. So you get uh, Korra kissing Mako, and you have like, wait, this is wrong, you were dating Asami at the time, and he's trying to like defend himself a little bit and stuff like that, and then Yin's constantly saying you're very much like your grandfather and stuff like that, so, you know, th th that's pretty funny. Just stick little comments that come in, and then Tu's there, Wu, and you see that Wu's kind of a very... Um, become friendly with the rest of Mako's family, which is nice to see as well. Um, but in general, all you really get at the end of this is just that Mako realizes how much kind of a Korra has inspired him throughout uh, their kind of time together, and that he really wouldn't be in the position that he's in right now, as you know, like really high up in the police and stuff like that, having so many friends, if she never came uh, into his life. Uh, so that's that, and it, it's fine, but it doesn't really do anything. Like going forward into the next episode, this episode, I don't think, is going to really be referenced at all. Uh, into the chorus stuff, she basically just talks to Asami about what Toph said, which is a nice continuity that actually brought that up, the uh, line that Toph said that um, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you fight, something will always come up, so there's no point doing anything. Um, and Korra's really taken this to heart, she doesn't think the world needs this avatar anymore, but uh, she brings up all the, basically the, the bad things that happened over the course of each book, and Asami just assures her that, you know, like, no, you accomplished good in all of these things. And even so, at the end, Korra's still like, you know, I still don't think it's, it's for nothing. Tenzin comes in and kind of says, yes, but you have grown yourself through all of these um, kind of uh, battles and stuff like that. And you're better for it now, and you know you need to keep going. Basically, again, nothing really much. It just continues the kind of reunion of last episode, and that the characters kind of catching up with each other. Um, the Varric Bolin stuff um, is probably the most interesting stuff of the episode, just because they have a little bit more fun with it, and it's not um, just flat out um, uh, clips for the most part. You know, you get the kind of funny moments as Varric's basically telling Bolin's story instead of Bolin, and he's telling it like. Bolin's kind of nook-took, and he does a lot of the stuff that Korra does, a little bit that Mako does, and stuff like that. Um, and they change up a little bit on the actual animations that happen, so they put like a Bolin's face over like Cosmic Korra when he fights uh, Unavatu. Um, they, they have this kind of moment where like all the villains of the books kind of like team up, so you have um, <laughs> like Unalak calling, uh, you have uh, Zaheer calling Vatu in the Tree of Time on the phone, Zombie Amon comes in, and then uh, kind of Movers Unalak comes in. That, that was pretty funny, but uh, again, you know, it, that's all it really was. It was just Varric being kind of odd and Bolin being like, no, that's not the story. How can you guys believe this? And they they just say, you know, like, oh, it's a mover. You, you, you can't uh, analyze it so much, you know, just accept it. And that's really it, um, and that that disappointed me because I was expecting Varric to maybe talk about himself. I assume that's still to come. Varric talked about his past, but um, this obviously wasn't the episode that it was meant to happen in. But still, um, so yeah, that, that's the episode. It just kind of ends in midair. I was like, really? That's the end of the episode. Like Varric just kind of brings Bolin and is just like, it was great, and then the episode just ends, and I'm just kind of like, really? That's it. Um, so. That's that. Um, it's understandable why it was this way. As I said, the budget for this book has been cut by exactly one episode, so one episode had to be not great. Or otherwise, we basically kind of would have the show cancelled almost with the lower budget. Um, but it's still disappointing that an amazing book, of an amazing run of episodes in this book so far, has come to a kind of crushing end. Um, this is. A, Far and away, you know, the worst episode of Avatar and Korra, um, but I think they, the creators and stuff like that realized that it had to be that way <clears throat> for the rest of the book to work out, but it still doesn't make up for the fact that it, it just wasn't very good, and so, you know, my, I know Brian in his post tried to explain that they, you know, they put a lot of hard work into this episode to make it something, but it, it doesn't really make up for the fact that it is just primarily just a recap episode and you know as much as there's they, they attempt to do some little emotional things with all the characters none of it really like is important really that much 
like I've seen other kind of uh, recap episodes that have done a lot more for characters. Like even like Transformers Prime, I think there was a there's a recap episode with Starscream and Megatron, and that was actually really interesting in like the approach that you got to it with the two characters. This one was just kind of like, oh, okay. They're just kind of like, okay, this is how I think about my past. And like, no, 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 think about it this way, and stuff like that. But still, um, it remains an enjoyable show to watch. Like, even watching this, like, I was kind of interested in this, like, okay, how's Avatar going to do just a standard clip show episode? And they did this. And it was like, okay, it was cool. They had some fun with it at the end. Took it a bit too seriously at the start. Um, fine. But uh, yeah, that's the episode. In the comments, I really want to know what your thoughts are on the episode. Um, I, I think most people in general are disappointed with the episode, but understand that it's this way for a reason. I assume there are some people who are unaware of what Brian said about the budget cut and are going to freak out about the episode, like, really heavily. But, you know, obviously, it's all important. It's spread the news about that budget cut. Make it known that it was basically Nickelodeon that made the episode this way, not... Mike and Brian, it wasn't their, like, purposeful, cr creative decision to make this episode a clip show. They probably could have used this episode really effectively to set up stuff going forward. But what they did say is that, you know, because this episode was the one episode we had to sacrifice, the rest of the season is going to be amazing because this is the kind of uh, calm before the storm, or so they said. So we've probably got a lot to look for in the next couple of episodes, the last few. Um, and yeah, that's that's been the review we will do a podcast review of this. I was kind of doubting if we'd even do it, but I suppose it'll just end up being a little bit of a shorter podcast. The main discussion topic will, of course, be the budget cut, and I suppose in general, like how this how this was compared to other like club show episodes and stuff like that. I don't think there's that much in the episode specifically to, to discuss, but maybe as we go through it, we'll find some more interesting kind of uh, connections between the the past and the kind of present, what they remember and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, definitely tune into that to get a more detailed analysis on the episode. Uh, for now, I'm just kind of like, okay, that was disappointing, fine, it wasn't, like, awful. Like, it wasn't awful. I think that, that that's the one thing to make clear. This as an episode, even watching it, wasn't, like, awful. It wasn't, like, terrible to watch. Um, uh, I don't know how many times I'd, like, rewatch it again. Like, maybe if I, I was doing a rewatch of the series, I'd probably just go through it and watch it, but... It's not exactly the episode I'm going to go like, yeah, I need to watch Remembrances again, like, out of nowhere. Like I would with, say, Light in the Dark, Darkness Falls, or something like that. But, um, um, I suppose one thing it does do it is it takes the Great Divide off the bottom uh, rung of the ladder so far with Avatar and Korra. Most people consider that the worst episode. I personally don't. I'd probably consider Nightmares and Daydreams the very bottom episode, but this definitely is the bottom one now, um, so... I suppose that makes that episode, those two episodes better, but um, yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.